We'll be visiting the 1890s via a 1940s proxy, for today we have viewed 1944's The Lodger. Now, the title of The Lodger is most famously associated with Alfred Hitchcock's 1927 film, though they are both adaptations of the same literature. Marie Belloc Lowne's The Lodger, a short story in 1911, later expanded to novel in 1913. This is a Jack the Ripper yarn. The mysterious Mr. Slade takes up residence at a London lodge. The landlords, Robert and Ellen Bonting, begin to suspect that Mr. Slade is, in fact, the loose Whitechapel murderer. George Sanders portrays a smartly suspicious detective, communicating with the Bontings regarding their concern. Meanwhile, fellow lodger Kitty Langley strikes up a rapport with Mr. Slade, which winds up predictably dangerous. Yes, this film is predictable, but I found it quite satisfying overall. It features solid cinematography, with some rather outstanding lighting that, well, mostly, effectively disguised the sets. Actually, I had to research and be certain this production was filmed on a soundstage because I wasn't entirely sure watching it. The consistent high angles suggested the convenience of an interior set, but they, seem genu they, se they genuinely seem to have invoked the past for the sake of an effective period illustration. I was fairly impressed, I have to say. But even narratively, I found elements of this film to be to be thoroughly enjoyable. I do like Led Kragar as Mr. Slade, and I enjoyed George Sanders in anything. Actually, a layperson might know George Sanders as voicing Shere Khan in the 1967 Jungle Book, one of the most sublime voice acting roles of all time. But most of all, I enjoyed the bonding couple. I quite enjoy a husband and wife lead character that dynamic in a non-romantic context, and there are not an enormous number of examples which spring to my mind. Hitchcock's The Man Who Knew Too Much, the 1955 film, and Basil Dearden's The Smallest Show on Earth were the most prominent in my brief brainstorm there. The way they speculate amongst themselves is extremely entertaining, their paranoia and subsequent doubt about how to soothe it makes for pretty fun viewing. Now if I had to compare this film to... with Alfred Hitchcock's The Lodger, I would traditionally have to go with Hitchcock's, although I won't assume that certainty for the sake of the record here. I'd prefer to rely on a fresher memory, uh, confident I may be in its apparent superiority. You know, I imagine if films back to back, you could gauge the major distinctions between film craftsmanship between the between 1927 and 1944. I mean, besides the obvious distinctions. The director of this film was one John Brahm. The only other work of his I am seemingly familiar with, aside from certain episodes of the Alfred Hitchcock, sh Alfred Hitchcock shows, funnily enough, which I may have viewed, is, is 1952's The Miracle of Our Lady of Fatima. Now, I could go on about my great fondness for that particular picture, but I'd prefer to keep the limelight on The Lodger. So all in all, I find 1944's The Lodger a fun Victorian era cavalt. If it sounds like fun to you, give it a spin.